gather in God's presence, we begin with our call to worship. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. So our first hymn is hymn number 657, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Let us pray. And if you're following the text of the prayer, um, please say the words in bold. Glorious and gracious God, you are with us and call us into your presence. We lift our hearts in response to your love. We raise our songs in praise of your goodness. We offer our adoration in response to your holiness. Summon us, voice of God, with words of challenge and power, calling us to courageous discipleship and urgent witness. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak to us, breath of God, with forgiveness for the many occasions we have hidden behind weakness, belittling your power and denying your presence. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Amen. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you would like to unmute yourself so that we could say the Lord's Prayer together, please say whichever form of words you prefer and whichever language you feel most comfortable in as we say <coughs> the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven. Lord, 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 hallowed be your name. Thy, name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, will be done. done. On, earth, on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. As this day. Give, us give us today our daily, our daily bread, bread. Mm. and forgive and us our sins. trespasses as we, we forgive those who trespass against us. And save us not from the time of trial. Deliver, deliver us from evil. From evil. For thine the kingdom, is the kingdom, power, power and, and the glory, forever and forever. And ever. Amen. Amen. And if you could mute yourselves again, please. Um, Annie is now going to bring us our first Bible reading. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Here ends the first Bible reading. Thank you, Annie. Our second hymn is I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
Now Annie's going to read our second Bible reading for us. The second reading is from John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the second lesson. Amen. Thank you, Annie. So our two Bible readings today are very clear about the importance of listening and attending to God's call to us and Jesus' instruction to follow him. Prayer, of course, is the obvious way to listen to God just opening ourselves up and clearing our minds of our day-to-day -day thoughts. It can be hard to find the space, time and quiet necessary to listen and to try and hear what God is saying to us. But we would be mistaken to think that what we need is a voice booming out instructions in the middle of the night, when there are other ways that God can get the message through to us. We often talk about a calling, a feeling that what we are doing in the service of God is something that we've been specifically asked to do. It was meant for us. Certain professions may seem to be callings, medicine, teaching, musicians. There may be many reasons why people are drawn to these things, but I've never yet met anyone who felt they were born to be an accountant. Sorry, Guy. <laughs> How can we recognise when something is a call from God? In our first reading from Samuel, it takes the intervention of Eli to make Samuel aware that God is calling him. And this can often be the case in our own Christian lives. Sometimes others are able to discern things in us which we are not aware or have chosen to ignore. We can, of course, still decide to ignore, and it may take time and more than one person to convince us that God has a specific thing in mind for us. Equally, there may be something in a sermon or a hymn or Bible reading or a daily devotion that suddenly speaks to us and causes us to think, yes, this is speaking to me right now. This is exactly where I am. I'm sure that I can't be the only person who sat in church on a Sunday morning and thought that the sermon was aimed directly at me. There may be times also when we are convinced we have a calling only to find that others don't agree. Many years ago, in my previous church, a fellow elder, himself a son of the manse, felt that he was called to the ministry and wished to set in motion the necessary means of applying. To his dismay, the minister and others felt that though his faith was genuine and his desire to study and deepen his knowledge was too, becoming a minister was not the direction he should take. He decided that leaving the URC and becoming an Anglican would be his next step, hoping that he could follow what he saw as his vocation within the Church of England. Although he was able to study and become a doctor of theology, I looked him up on the internet recently and he, he never did train for the ministry 
having been rejected by the Church of England too. He has in fact written a book about this after having spoken to others who have also faced a similar rejection of what they felt was their vocation. Who was right and who was wrong? I don't know. But the person I knew would not, I think, have been a person suited to the pastoral responsibilities expected of a minister. But it would surely also be a mistake to think that in order for us to be good, effective Christians, we must also be trying to listen out for a specific call from God. Jesus tells us to follow him, and we know that means putting ourselves into our communities, both as a church and as individual Christians in our immediate neighbourhoods. A few weeks before Christmas, there was a report on the BBC 10 o'clock news from Burnley in Lancashire, which had been hard hit by 10 years of austerity, followed by the devastation that COVID was having and an already incredibly poor and sick population. The reporter was speaking to and following two Christian ministers, Pastor Mick and Father Alex, as they tried to alleviate some of the hunger and despair that faced them every day. It had a profound impact on many of those who were watching the news that night, myself included, and was featured in many of the next day's papers and radio programmes. Over a quarter of a million pounds was donated spontaneously by the public towards the work they were doing. In particular, the tattooed sunglasses and donkey jacket wearing Pastor Mick had obviously intrigued people. And two weeks later, the BBC News website profiled him and what had led to his work in Burnley. I've provided the link to this in the uh, sermon text and would urge you to read Mick's full story, which is truly one of redemption. But what I would like to highlight for the purposes of this sermon is this part. He was a well-known drug dealer and fixer, a bit of a hard man, in fact, a very hard man. And he was waiting with a gun wrapped in a plastic bag in order to settle a drug score. I watched him walk out the gym, but this time was different. He had two kids with him, two young children, blonde girls around five years old. I got out of the car and walked, my hand reaching into the plastic. But then I looked again at the children, again at their faces, their blonde hair, innocent kids. Then it happened. Mick describes in detail seeing a blinding light coming from one of the children's hands. It was white, brilliant white. For 15 seconds, I couldn't see, he says. It was like looking into the sun and I was paralyzed by it. Mick doesn't know what really happened to him that day, but one thing he is certain of, this was the moment that changed his life forever. I collapsed, then struggled back to the car. I felt sick. I was shaking, sweating, heart beating fast. I could hear my pulse as if it was in my head. I didn't know what was happening to me. And then he says he pleaded with God to help him. But nothing happened. Well, Mick then goes on to tell how he sat in the car with the gun he'd intended to use on the other man and placed it under his chin. But when he pulled the trigger, the gun didn't go off. I broke down. The tears would not stop falling and I started to feel sick again. I was retching and I punched and smashed the car radio. My hand started to bleed. In that moment, I was seeing myself for who I really was. I hadn't cried for nearly 30 years. The last time I cried like this was when I was 11 years old. Sitting in that car, it was like I was crying for him, that boy, the child I was, and the life I could have had. Mick suffering, Mick was suffering a complete breakdown, his violent past catching up with him, the end of decades of pain. Now, I must confess, when I read this part of the story, I was fully expecting that the blinding light coming from the child's hands would then be followed by details of how in that instant, 
instance, Mick had heard God or seen Jesus or had some sort of powerful conversion experience. But instead, he had a breakdown and he was sectioned and placed in Burnley's mental health unit. However, it was there that he began to slowly mend, finding love and acceptance and caring from the other patients, many of whom were extremely ill themselves. Praying and talking with a minister who visited the unit led to the emergence of the feelings he'd kept hidden away for so long. And a chance encounter with a lecturer from Manchester University led eventually to a degree in theology via diagnoses of dyspraxia and dyslexia. You will see if you read his story, and I hope you will, that there is no obvious call from God, but in response to an immense need, there is a faith community who are not only serving their neighbors, but are responding to Jesus's command to follow me. And also like Philip saying, come and see, as they pray and minister to spiritual need. It is perhaps something which we at Trinity must think about as we start the process of seeking a new minister. When we say, come and see, what do we hope we will be showing of God's love? And where do we hope that following Jesus will lead us as a church community and as individual Christians. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us open minds to hear your word and open hearts to follow and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Michael Young is now going to lead our prayers of care and concern for others. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come unto you this morning in our prayers of intercession. Lord, we ask that you will be with those who have been affected by COVID-19, those who have contracted this terrible disease, those who have been hospitalized, and those who have lost loved ones. Comfort them and let them know that you are with them. Be with all those in the National Health Service who are working so hard to alleviate the worst effects of this virus, as well as those who are manufacturing, distributing and giving the vaccinations in the many centres throughout this land and increasingly around the world. Be with all the people who are war weary after almost a year of lockdowns and ever changing restrictions. Grant them patience and the strength to carry on obeying the rules. Be with those whose jobs are at risk and whose businesses are suffering as a result of the COVID-19. We pray for all those who have had operations and other treatments postponed, as well as all who are suffering mental stress. Lord, be with all in the education profession, as well as all pupils and students, having to cope with the strains of constant changes in advice and instruction, as well as in all the extra work that is imposed upon them. Be especially with those from deprived backgrounds and those working for them. Ensure that they are not further disadvantaged by the lack of access to modern technology. That it is often assumed is available and understood by all. Lord, ensure that the voices of those who work in the classroom and the lecture hall are heard by those in authority. Lord, be with all those who work in the essential services, police, fire brigade, public transport workers, delivery drivers, supermarket workers, postmen and women, refuse collectors, and the myriad of people whose contributions to society so often overlooked, but without whom this society would cease to function. Let us not forget their value. We think of the lonely of all ages and that you be with them as a true friend. Be with all in care homes and with all carers 
whether paid or unpaid, grant them courage, strength, wisdom, and above all, patience. As we move into 2021 and start to see the full impact of Brexit, we pray for the four nations of this land and their parliaments and assemblies. Lord, be with all those individuals and organisations who are going to be disadvantaged by Brexit. And we pray that in the medium and long term, solutions will be found that will reduce the damage. We pray for the people of the United States of America and President-elect Biden, that after the very difficult period in the country's history, he will be able to bring everyone together to work for the greater good of the nation and the wider world. Finally, Lord, we pray for Trinity. Lord, be with, all, with us all, wherever we are today. Sustain us over the weeks ahead until it is safe for us to meet up again in our own church to rejoice and worship you and to meet up in person. All this we ask and thank you for through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Um, it's now time for our offertory prayer, where we bring uh, our regular giving before God, whether that's uh, through um, a regular standing order, or if you are uh, saving your money up in a jar or something to bring when we can finally meet again at Trinity. But let us pray our offertory prayer. Eternal God and giver of all goods, we give thanks this day for the gifts of life and love family and friendship, and for the joy of the coming of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to dwell among us. We bring before you now a portion of the gifts you have given us to share, and pray that you would take and use them for your glory, and us for the service of your kingdom. Amen. And our final hymn is hymn number 558, Will You Come and Follow Me?
and our closing prayer and blessing. Lord Jesus Christ, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts and bring glory to your name. Amen. And may the Lord bless, protect and guide each one of us and each one whom we love and each one who needs our love. And to you, blessed God, be glory and honour and praise now and forever. Amen.